Hello and welcome to another unboxing from Gus Tech. Today we're going to be looking at the Corsair Sabre RGB gaming mouse. There are two different versions of this mouse. Uh, there's a laser and an optical version. We're going to be looking at the laser version. We're going to be unboxing it, taking apart some of the packaging, showing you what you're getting with the mouse. Additionally, we're going to be plugging it into a computer, showing you guys firsthand some of the software that Corsair has newly implemented with their brand new line of gaming mice. All right, so we have the actual packaging for the Corsair RGB Sabre gaming mouse. We're gonna go ahead and look at some of the details on the outside. You can see it has a flap, it's magnetically sealed. It shows you some information about the mouse. It has a lot of information on the side panels. Uh, shows you on the back some of the different polling rates that it uses, obviously the DPI settings it has. And on the side, it also talks about some of the color settings. This has 16.8 million different colors that you can use so you can have all the colors with your mouse. Let's go ahead and start unboxing it. Just a few pieces of tape we have to get through here and then extremely gently we'll open it up and get to the innards. As you can see there's our empty case. We'll toss that. And then looking at the actual inside packaging there's a little flap here that reveals the USB cord. So you can go in you can actually grab the USB cord out as you're starting to open this thing up so you don't injure it at all. I think they want you to fit it through that little hole. And there it goes, nice and easy. The box folds, folds open as you see. And here we go, getting the USB cable through the rabbit hole once again. Go ahead and toss that. Included here is the instruction manual and the warranty information. Here's your warranty. Great, awesome, we won't look at that. And the instruction manual. Uh, plug it in, install software. Not really in need of too much instructions, thank you. And let's look at the actual mouse. I will unvelcro the USB cable here so you can see exactly how long this is. This is a very long USB cable, it's almost two meters. Uh, in real measurement terms, that's uh, it's about six feet. Well, close to it anyway. When you actually hold the mouse, you'll notice, especially the big difference between this and the other Corsair gaming mice, the M60, the M65, is it's extremely light. Those mice were very heavy, they used a metal frame in them, and it added a lot of weight, which was nice for some people. However, if you're playing first-person shooters, things like that, you want a little bit lighter mouse, and this accomplishes that. It comes in at just around, it's pretty close to 100 grams. Very nice, very light, very easy to lift off the, the table as you're using it. Another thing you'll notice as you actually hold the mouse is this very soft plastic. It really feels nice on your hand. It feels very comfortable. As you notice, it is a braided USB cable. Uh, the braided USB cable is nice because it adds durability. Just when you get a braided USB cable, it should always be a common standard practice that you actually take the cable and you straighten it out. What happens with these is if you keep it bent and it gets bent too much, they'll actually start to pinch the cable on the inside. I don't really like that because they make these really tight. This does not have the sniper button on the side of the mouse. The M60, the M65 have a sniper button where your thumb can actually press it to slow down the DPI or increase the DPI respectively. It does have eight programmable buttons. Uh, there's the two DPI buttons. There's the back and forward button, standard buttons there. There's also a middle button right here that you can program to whatever you'd like. There's the left and right click as well as the middle button. The mouse does have Corsair's horrendously ugly tramp stamp. Their new gaming tramp stamp that they'd like to put on all of their products. I don't really know why they're doing it. We want the sales back, Corsair. This looks stupid. Uh, that's just my opinion, but it's right, so keep that in mind. This does come with an 8200 DPI sensor, uh, laser sensor, so it is going to have a very, very high DPI. I don't know anybody who, in their right mind who would ever use that much DPI. If you're using anything more than 4000, you don't understand DPI anyway. It does have a 1000 hertz polling rate, which means that it's going to have a very fast connection to the USB uh, connection it has to your computer. This mouse is made specifically for FPS gamers. Corsair says that specifically on their website. However, it's also going to be very nice for people who play MOBAs, who play real-time strategy games. If you're playing things like World of Warcraft, Wildstar, different other uh, MMOs, 
you're probably not going to like this as much because it has a limited amount of function on the actual buttons. You only have eight buttons as opposed to some of the, you know, the Nagas that have 16, 17, 20 buttons, whatever the hell they want to put in them now. It's a lot more geared towards competitive gamers. So here we have the mouse actually plugged in. You can see Corsair software working here in the background. Uh, this is the mouse as it's showing up some pink lighting for the tramp stamp as well as on the mouse wheel. And if I flip it over, you can also see the lighting come through on the part that actually shows onto your mouse pad. When the lights are off, which we're not going to turn off, but when the lights are off, it'll actually show on your mouse pad. It looks pretty nice. It's a cool little feature if you're into that. You can see also the mouse pad feet are very large. And this is nice because there's four of them in different areas. And when you're actually tracking on a mouse pad, it's going to be very, very smooth. It's actually going to be a very nice feel as you're going around on the mouse pad. It feels almost like it's floating, especially with how light the mouse is. Let's get into some of the software and what it can actually do. As you can see, here's some different lighting adjustments we can do. As we click on one, you can see the changes happening on the mouse. And we click on the other, you can see it. We can also change the individual lights. There's lighting effects, which I haven't taken the time to figure out how to do yet, but it's really not too complicated. It's actually pretty basic, especially for figuring out the basic colors. Adding some of the effects is a little bit more complicated as you go into the lighting effects. Additionally, we can go to our button assignments here, and this is the place where you can program each individual button on the mouse. One thing I don't really like about this software, the mouse wheel has a middle click option where you can change what this actually does, but the problem is you can't change what the up scroll and the down scroll do. Other software such as on the Funk, MS3, various other mice have that you can change the actual up and down scroll to be different options. Spacebar, for example, if you're playing Counter-Strike or something similar, which I kind of wish you could do in this. Going over to the Performance tab, you can see that it has various DPI jump stages. You have one, two, three, four, and five. Five different DPI settings. Those are adjusted here on the mouse itself by actually clicking on this top part. And you can see the light actually changes as you change the DPI settings on the mouse with whatever DPI you're using. So it's going to go the highest is blue, and you can change these color profiles for each DPI setting, the lowest being red. We're going to have it on red because I like my DPI settings low, as I feel it gives me a much better tracking experience. It also has a sniper DPI. Keep in mind with this sniper DPI, there is no sniper button, a dedicated one. So you actually have to program either your back or your forward button to actually be that sniper button for you. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this middle button here as your sniper button because that's going to be horrible to try and hold when you're actually using the mouse. Obviously, there's the DPI uh, adjustments you can throw in here, your pointer speed, your pointer precision. This is a bad thing. This is basically turning on mouse acceleration. You don't want this. You don't want angle snapping either. You just don't ever want those things. The nice thing about these Corsair mice is they allow you to change the lift height. Typically, though, the middle is actually very low. I'm, I'm barely lifting the mouse off of the pad here, and we're not getting any tracking whatsoever. Now, let's take a look at some of the actions you can do in here. You can record macros with this, uh, different text you can put in, keystrokes, shortcuts, whatever. It can launch different things. Now, something very cool about this software and something that Corsair has really been historically very poor at is implementing a very nice, a very effective uh, macro editor. What their macro editor is now able to do is you can actually select a macro, you can go through and program it, and it can program keystrokes on your keyboard, it can program mouse clicks, it can program the position of your mouse pointer itself, and it can all do it in real time. So for example, if you have a certain timing scheme that you need to have set up in whatever video game it is, uh, you know, whether it's World of Warcraft or an RTS or whatever it may be, don't use it in competitive because I think that's cheating. But if you're not using it in a competitive scenario and you're just trying to make your, your life a little bit easier, it can actually do the timings that you would normally do with the mouse positioning, everything that you would normally have in the game. Pretty cool. You can see that you can also change the lighting effects. Again, gradients, ripples, waves. I created a ripple profile. Again, I didn't take too much time to actually trying to get it to work. Uh, but what it, what it will do on the lighting of the mouse is you'll see a ripple effect from the bottom to the top. And uh, you can get the same thing with the wave and the gradient. So it comes in and out. Uh, again, you know, some 
I guess, less exciting features for most people because most people probably aren't ever going to use them. But if you like to customize your devices and your mice, this works great. As you can see, uh, there's options to have it start on system startup. Automatically creates application profiles stored on the device. What this is actually really cool for is if you click on this, whatever you have your, your, your DPI settings at, your lighting settings at, whatever the settings are, your macros even, they can be stored in the onboard memory on the mouse. So when you take it to your friend's house and you're using his really crappy computer that doesn't have all your software, it's really simple. You just plug it in and it has all your macros stored automatically. You don't have to worry about it. Another thing it has, backup and recover options. So you can store your different settings and you can recover them uh, to an external hard drive, whatever it may be. Uh, you can disable the device lighting and then your mouse is really boring. Or you can turn it back on and it's really exciting again. You know, great mouse. Right from the get-go, we actually plugged this in. The first thing it asked us to do was to update the firmware. Very nice, we didn't have to actually click on that button. It just told us to do it, which I really appreciate. Uh, you can see here's the support information. Anyway, again, there's a lot of things to explore when you're actually going into this, this software and the profiles and the lighting and things like that. This is obviously just a brief overview, but keep in mind this is by far the most powerful any Corsair software for any mouse or keyboard has ever been. In fact, my biggest gripe with their products was the fact that their software was horrible. And this has really done a lot to bridge that gap. As I'm actually clicking the mouse and using it, there's quite a bit of travel on the click distance. I don't really mind that. I, I like to click rather hard when I'm clicking. I, I was raised on an IntelliMouse, which took a lot of abuse. But other people might not like that as much. It's not necessarily a soft click. Uh, the scroll wheel is also very stiff. I don't, I don't like how stiff it is. It's uncomfortably stiff to me, but it might break in and be a little bit easier later on. My personal preferences on this mouse, if I were to give my own uh, ideas of what I would like to do with it, is I would go into the profiles. I would change the assignments so that the DPI up and the DPI down are no longer DPI adjustments. And I would have them used for playing music, skipping a track, so that when I'm playing a game, if I want to pause the song or skip the track or whatever it is, I can do it right from my mouse without clicking anything else. Um, as you can see, stock, this button, the 8 button, does not actually have any assignment. When you click it, a nice drop down comes up and you can get a number of different options or you can program a macro or something or remap it into even a keyboard shortcut. So all in all, very nice software. Good job, Corsair. This is much better than what you've done in the past. And as you can see, I'll show you the mouse one more time. Very slick underneath. Uh, very, really actually a solid build quality. I'm very impressed with it. Uh, they've done an excellent job with this. Thanks again for joining us for our unboxing of the Corsair Sabre RGB gaming mouse. This is the laser version again with an 8200 DPI sensor. Uh, we've been very impressed with the mouse. Overall, it is really a, a pretty solid product. I can recommend it very highly. 16.8 million colors, so you can go crazy with the color profiles on it. The programmable macros are extremely impressive. Using the software was a lot better than the experiences that we've previously had with different Corsair products. Uh, to be honest with you, the whole thing has actually surpassed my expectations of a Corsair mouse. I had the original M60, and I've always liked their mice, but I've never really thought that they were the top level. I will say this is much, much better. Keeping in mind all those benefits, my gripe with this mouse is the fact that it is a claw grip mouse. You can't hold it as a palm grip like this because your fingers are going to fall right off. It's going to be very uncomfortable. However, it is designed to be gripped like this, as a claw grip design. My personal preference, I don't like claw grips. I don't think it allows me to be as quick responding with my fingers. And again, the comfort level just really isn't there for me. So if you like the claw grip, very similar to the Logitech G9X, if you like those type of mice, this is perfect. This is the best mouse I have seen to date that accommodates claw grip users. Overall, there's not a lot of bad things to be said about this mouse. I can honestly give it my wholehearted recommendation. If you're looking for a mouse, you're looking for something with a claw grip design, with a very nice sensor, and with all of the software that you need to customize it and make it your own, this Corsair Sabre RGB gaming mouse is one of the best I've ever seen. Make sure to check back for more reviews, unboxings, uh, different analysis of monitors, gadgets, phones, mice, graphic cards. We're going to be doing a build of another computer pretty soon here, showing you quite a few other things that can satisfy your tech needs. If you want to buy this product, the Corsair Sabre RGB gaming mouse, there is a link in the description. You can purchase it directly from there. 
If you do that, that goes towards supporting us and allowing us to make continued videos like this. Like the video if you liked it, comment if you have any questions, concerns, uh, issues with the video, or you just want to be heard. And go ahead and click that subscribe button so we can continue to make videos like this and you guys can continue to satisfy that tech itch you have. Thanks for watching. We are Gus Tech. We'll see you next time.